In this video, we'll look at the latest Mac live streaming software, a roundup and a review of the leading options and my pick for the best live streaming software on Mac right now. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you amplify your business and brand with video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything that we mentioned in this video will be down in the description box below. Let's jump into it. Now, whether you're looking to go live on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, Twitch, or pretty much any other major platform, there are a lot of software options right now to help you do it. They're also constantly updating and improving, which is awesome. So in this video, we're gonna run through a quick review of the leading options right now, one by one, including the strengths, the weaknesses, pricing, my recommendations, and everything that you need to know to pick the best option for you. So I'm gonna start off first by covering off on the software options, the program that you'll actually download and install on your computer. And then make sure you stick around because after that, I'm gonna show you some newer options that just run in your web browser. And some of these are an absolute game changer. So with that too, the landscape of all of these options is getting very saturated, but we'll jump straight into the shortlist and we're gonna ignore the options that aren't worth your time. So our shortlist for best live streaming software on Mac includes OBS, Ecamm Live, Wirecast, Zoom, be Live, StreamYard, and Lightstream. And we'll jump in and take a look at each one of these now. So the first option is OBS, or Open Broadcaster Software. Now this is totally free, and it's available on both Mac and PC. Now this is probably one of the most popular solutions out there when it comes to live streaming software. Maybe because of the price, but also because of the feature set. This is definitely on the more advanced side of things in regards to the level of control and everything that you have over your live stream. That's not to say that it isn't good for an absolute beginner as well, but there definitely is a learning curve as the overall user interface and experience isn't really intuitive. Now OBS make it easy enough to set up different scenes for your live stream. So you might have a scene where it's your webcam full screen. A second scene might be your computer screen share. So they make it easy enough to set these up and tailor up the look and feel, but also to switch between them easily while you're live. So OBS gives you lots of advanced controls over the setup of your live streams, but there's no wizards or step-by-step -step setup pathways. There's also no presets or templates that you can quickly use and apply for broadcasting to places like YouTube and Facebook with the recommended settings. You actually have to go and do a little bit of research and look and see what those settings are and what YouTube recommends, what Facebook recommends or Twitch or any other platform and key those in manually into OBS. So it's not a deal breaker, but it definitely doesn't have a lot of the presets and templates and those sorts of things that make it much easier to get up to speed than some of the other options that we're going to cover. But in saying that as well, a lot of the other options that we're gonna cover that have those presets and, and set templates don't have the level of control that you can customize things up as much as you can inside of OBS. Now, one big advantage with OBS though, is that you've got a massive plugins library. So of all these bolt-in tools and add-ons that you can get to take your live streams up a notch, adding in things like social media integration and interaction so that you can bring in your comments from places like Facebook or YouTube and overlay them easily into your live streams. Some of the other options we're gonna cover already have some of those things built in, but just know that there is a massive library of plugins and bolt-ons for OBS to really be able to get more power out of it and to be able to customize it up for what you're looking to achieve. And also given that it is such a popular option and that it is open source, there's also an amazing community there for support if you've got any issues. So if you're an absolute beginner or someone who just wants to get up to speed live streaming fast, OBS could be a little bit overwhelming and you definitely will need to put in some time to learn where everything is and to get everything set up. The next option we've got is Ecamm Live. Now this one is Mac only, there is no PC option of this. But I would say this is one of the best bang for buck options out there right now. The amount of advanced features and functionality that they have packed into this while still keeping it really, really intuitive and really, really easy to use is just insane. This is one of those programs where even if you're an absolute beginner and someone who's not so tech savvy, you could easily get up to speed really, really quickly and be live streaming and have an awesome looking live stream, having the ability to bring in 
comments from people on YouTube or Facebook, to be able to interact with them live, to be able to pick up and move titles and things around, but also to be able to easily bring in guests into your live stream. There is direct integration inside of Ecamm Live with Skype. And this will allow you to bring in up to five guests. And you can easily change the layout and switch things up while you're live, literally with a click of a button. But just like OBS, you also have the ability to set up and customize up different scenes, to switch between different scenes while you're live. Now, one of the standout features for me, besides everything that I've already mentioned, is while you're screen sharing, you also have the ability just to pinch to zoom on your trackpad or on your mouse to zoom in on certain areas of your computer screen to really make it easy for your viewers to follow along with what it is you're showing them if you're sharing your computer screen. That is a huge feature. To do that in some of the more advanced and more professional software like Wirecast, which we will get to, you've really got to dive into menus and things to be able to scale it up while you're live, which makes it very clunky. But with this, it's literally a pinch to zoom on your mouse or on your trackpad and you're able to do it. Now we are definitely not going to cover off on all the features inside of Ecamm Live. We have done a full walkthrough on Ecamm Live and I will link it up in the cards, but just know that it is one of the best bang for buck live streaming programs out there right now. Now, in regards to pricing, they've recently moved from a one-time fixed fee to a subscription-based model. You can pick up the standard license for $12 per month or the professional license for $20 per month, which is crazy cheap. And really, unless you specifically need some of those advanced features, I would say most people would easily be able to get away with the $12 per month. For me personally though, I go with the pro plan because it's got the virtual camera out, but also because it's got the real-time bandwidth monitoring as well, which the inner geek in me really likes. So Ecamm Live would be perfect for anyone, whether you're an absolute beginner and never live streamed before, right through to someone who is a professional live streamer, just given the ease of use, but also the amount of features and control that you have in there. The next option is Zoom. Now Zoom will work on both Mac and PC. Now it's not really live streaming software, instead it's more video conferencing software that can live stream. Feature wise, it probably has the least amount of features of all the options we're covering, but that also means it's going to be really, really easy to use. You can easily stream to places like Facebook and YouTube, and you can share your computer screen. But probably the biggest feature is the ability to not just bring in one or two guests into your live stream, but because it's video conferencing software, you actually can instead go live with your entire call of up to 100 people who are on live with you. So if you're creating live streams where you wanna be able to bring people in easily and not be restricted by numbers, then this is really the best option. While you're live, you'll get to choose between a speaker view, which is where it'll automatically switch between the active speaker or whoever is speaking, or a gallery view, which is really a Brady Bunch style view with a number of people displayed in a grid on screen all at once. As for the downsides, besides the limited controls and functionality, probably the biggest one is while you can stream out of Zoom, you can't read or respond to comments or interactions from your streams from within Zoom. So you'll need to head over to Facebook or to YouTube or to wherever you're streaming to be able to see all the comments and all the interactions and to interact with your viewers there. So it's not a real deal breaker, but it would be awesome if the chat was integrated inside of Zoom as well. Now in regards to pricing, to be able to live stream from Zoom, you will need the pro plan, which is $14.99 per month. So Zoom is gonna be perfect for anyone looking for something easy to use, where you can easily bring in and manage multiple guests on the stream without all the bells and whistles included in a lot of the other options. The next option is Wirecast. Now this is definitely more on the much more professional end of things than all of the other options so far. The interface itself is actually really easy to use. It's pretty easy to get your head around how it all works and how to get up to speed and set up and running with it fast. I have done a lot of high-end corporate live streams in my time and Wirecast has been a rock solid solution for all of them. One of the big advantages with Wirecast, and I did just touch on it, is it's got all these advanced features and things, which is awesome. So you really know that you're covered and you've got a complete solution with Wirecast. But it's also really, really intuitive and easy to find things. And I think that is a critical distinction between something like Wirecast and something like OBS, which also has a heap of advanced control and functionality, but 
If you're at a pinch and something goes wrong while you're live, and yes, this stuff does happen, it's much quicker, much easier, and much more stress-free finding and fixing these things in Wirecast than it is in something like OBS where you're just going through menus and menus just trying to find and fix things. So that is a massive advantage as far as I'm concerned for Wirecast. Now in regards to pricing, you've got a few different options. There is actually a free version called Wirecast Play, I don't recommend that one. That one is YouTube only and there's some big limitations. The ones that I'm talking about are Wirecast 1, Wirecast Studio and Wirecast Pro. Wirecast 1 sells for $249 and that will let you broadcast out to one destination like Facebook or YouTube. The next one up from that Studio, which is the one that I would recommend for most people is $449 and that will unlock a heap of extra features and also have the ability to bring in two guests. So Wirecast does have its own guesting feature to be able to bring in guests to your live stream. And above that is the Pro License for $699, letting you bring in up to seven guests and unlocking all of the advanced features. So that's advanced audio processing, PTZ camera control, instant replay, and a whole heap of other really advanced features. So Wirecast is gonna be a great option for someone who is looking for something that is easy enough to use, but still has all of the advanced professional broadcast features to be able to do some really high-end stuff. But even if you're just looking to create more straightforward or more simple live streams, this is gonna be a rock solid solution that's going to be easy enough for you to use and to master and to get really comfortable with. So that's it for Mac live streaming software that you actually download and install on your computer. The next ones that we're gonna cover are browser-based ones that you run on your internet browser, and these are pretty exciting. So the first one we're gonna cover has been around for a little while now, but it's called BeLive. Now this one is probably one of the simplest live streaming programs to use full stop. You literally just sign up and log into the website and then you're presented with three streaming modes or three streaming options. You can choose to go live solo, by yourself where you've still got the ability to share your computer screen. You can do an interview live stream where you're able to bring someone in with you or you can select to do a talk show where you can bring in multiple guests. And the cool part about this is your guest to come and join you on the live stream doesn't need to have an account or anything. They can join from their mobile or from their computer. If you wanna bring more than one person into your live stream, that's when you'll be selecting talk show and you can have up to four people on the live stream at one time, yourself included. But you can also have up to 10 guests that are waiting in the lobby, like the green room, where you can switch people in and out. Now it's really easy in BeLive to bring up any text on screen or titles on screen. You can actually create all the titles ahead of time before you go live, and then you just click on them and they'll be featured on screen. It's also really easy to bring in and feature comments from your viewers on Facebook as well. This was one of the first platforms that had this feature to be able to bring in and feature comments live on your live stream. You literally just click on the comment, it's featured on screen, and you click on it again to hide it and it's gone. Now as for downsides with BeLive, up until recently you could only use it to broadcast live to Facebook Live and no other platform, but right now they've also added integration for Twitch. So you can't use it with YouTube, you can't use it with any other platform, you've got Twitch and Facebook and that is it for now. Now in regards to pricing, there is a free plan which gives you two 20 minute broadcasts per week totally free. There's also a light plan at $16 per month, which doesn't include screen sharing, but it does let you do 16 broadcasts per month. Or there is a standard plan for $25 a month, unlimited broadcasting with screen sharing capabilities and some custom branded frames as well. So BeLive is a solid option for someone, whether you're an absolute beginner, first time live streamer, right through to someone who is a seasoned pro, but someone who is not looking for all the bells and whistles, someone who literally wants to click a few buttons go live, maybe bring a few people in, this will be a great solution for you. Now, if you're looking for something similar, but with more advanced control, that's what the next two options are. So the next option is StreamYard, and it is very similar to BeLive, but really on steroids. You've got so much more control over the look and feel of the broadcast. You can totally customize up the titles and the branding and everything to really make it look like your brand. Unlike BeLive, you can use StreamYard to broadcast to more places, things like Twitter, Periscope, YouTube, as well as Facebook and Twitch as well. You can also have up to six people on your live stream with you. 10 of them can enter what they call the broadcast studio or the green room and be swapped in and out, but you can bring on up to six on screen at a time. 
One of the features I really like in StreamYard is that it is kind of theme and template based, similar to BeLive, where you've got the ability just to click on some different presets like 50-50 camera split, or like you off to one side and your screen share on the other side. There's templates set up for different scenes, but it literally is click of a button and it's going to change your scene to those things. Now they're not highly customizable at all, but this is the next level on that scene integration and, and swapping up things while you're live than you get in BeLive, and it is super powerful in StreamYard. In regards to pricing, there is a free version which will add a watermark or branding onto your live stream. You can remove that if you upgrade to the basic plan for $20 per month. You can also then customize that up and add in your own logo and you can also add overlays and backgrounds and those sorts of things in there as well. Up from that, they have a professional plan for $39 per month which really just gives you access to priority support. So this is a really great option, again, for someone, absolute beginner right through to advanced, someone who is looking to be able to bring guests in easy, to easily be able to set up your live streams and go live without too much technical knowledge or without a heap of advanced features. I think this is a really powerful option. And that brings us to the final option, which is Lightstream. Now this one I think is also a bit of a game changer. Compared to all the other ones we've covered, this is closest to StreamYard, but I would say that it has more features and more advanced features and control than StreamYard. Now just like BeLive and StreamYard, this one runs in your browser as well. But you do also have the option to download their software or their local client as they call it, to unlock more advanced features. Just like StreamYard, you're able to go live to pretty much all the major platforms out there, Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, YouTube, you name it. And also like the others, it is super easy to invite and bring guests into your live stream as well. You can currently bring in up to seven additional guests, making it a total of eight people live on your live stream. There's also a really cool feature with Lightstream where you're able to log in from your phone and control your live stream to be able to start and stop the stream, to be able to switch the different scenes that you've got set up all from your mobile device. So you're not touching your computer while you're live. Now this is a fairly new offering and they're still rolling out new features. There is currently no full HD, no 1080p, but you can do 720p at 60 frames per second where they've said that 1080p will be out soon. And they'll also be very shortly adding in the ability to stream your video files as well. So you can play back a video live in your live stream, which was a feature they had, but they've removed it. But again, they've said that they're coming back soon. Now in regards to the amount of control and customizing up the look and feel, especially compared to BeLive and StreamYard, you'll actually get a lot more control in Lightstream than the other two. You can really dial everything in and customize it up and make it look amazing and also make it match your brand as well. So while this is kind of the new kid on the block in this space and it is missing a couple of features like your full HD live streaming and the ability to playback videos in your stream, out of these last three, this is the one that I am most excited about. I really like what they're doing, and I think this, this is the one to watch. Now in regards to pricing, Lightstream is free. Now I'm gonna read this out so I don't mess it up. Streaming with Livestream is free and will always remain free, but premium features may arrive with a price point in the future. So Livestream is going to be a good solution for someone who is looking for a simple but advanced live streaming platform that you can run from your web browser without the need to get caught up in a heap of settings and technical stuff to be able to bring guests in and set up your live stream and everything. As I said, I really think this is the one to watch moving forward, especially when they bring out full 1080p support and also bring back that video file streaming feature as well. So that's the roundup of the top live streaming programs on Mac right now. Now with anything like this, I would strongly recommend that you grab the trial versions and at least try out a couple of these that you think are going to be the fit for you. And it really is just a matter of finding the right tool to get the job done. So test a couple, see which one is a fit for you and use that. There is no right or wrong with this stuff. And again, we've got links down in the description below to where you can grab those trial versions. But for me personally, when I'm live streaming on Mac, hands down, I'm gonna be using Ecamm Live. I just really think it is the complete package. And that's coming from someone who has used Wirecast and really advanced software for a long time. My go-to now is Ecamm Live. And I just think it is the crazy awesome package. Um, best bang for buck by a long shot. But I'm also keeping a close eye on Lightstream and I really think that that is going to be an absolute game changer as well. So those are the best options for live streaming right now. 
Now, one of the great ways to maximize your live streams is to repurpose your content after you've been live. Check out the video linked on screen now showing you the best ways to repurpose your video content for portrait for places like Instagram TV. And I'll see you in the next one.